as we know, you had today several meetings which had not been planned in advance. Who were your counterparts? And have you managed to overcome some of the differences and disparities between you and some of the other leaders? I don't know what disparities you are talking about. Today, I, ha I had a lot of meetings, practically with uh, every uh, participant of uh, today's activities. Uh, you probably you probably saw that I uh, was sitting at uh, the table next to the Queen of Denmark and with the representatives of Luxembourg and uh, Norway with the president of Greece and so on. I, I probably wouldn't be able to enumerate all of them, but there were quite a few. And of course, uh, I've met with uh, Mr. Poroshenko and with uh, President Obama of the United States. We had uh, quite a substantive discussion with him. Can I ask you about uh, Mr. Poroshenko? I'm with Ria Novosti. Uh, have you managed to um, come to terms with him? Uh, have you, what issues have you discussed? Uh, and are you planning for new meetings? And uh, if so, in what format? As far as format is concerned, um, I, uh, I had said in advance that uh, I was not going to hide from anyone here in uh, Normandy at this event. It would have been uh, uh, unwise and uh, uh, impolite of me. And, and also I had been requested uh, by my Western counterparts to meet with President Poroshenko uh, on the sidelines uh, of uh, uh, these f uh, events, of these festivities in Normandy. So we had a 15-minute discussion. I can't say that it was... Um, comprehensive, uh, but still we have managed to discuss uh, the principal issues related to stabilizing Ukraine and um, uh, promoting our economic cooperation. And I cannot uh, but give credit to President Poroshenko in his uh, uh, conviction that uh, violence in eastern Ukraine must be stopped immediately. He has a plan, but I wouldn't be prepared to tell you what it is about. Uh, it is his plan, so maybe you should ask him. He only told me briefly of it. Once again, I would like to emphasize that, that it isn't Russia and Ukraine who should be negotiating parties in this uh, uh, case. Uh, Russia is not a party to this conflict. Uh, it must be negotiation or dialogue between the Ukrainian government in Kiev and the representatives uh, of the breakaway republics um, in eastern Ukraine. Um, I generally liked the attitude of Mr. Poroshenko, and if uh, if everything goes uh, according to his um, present intentions, uh, then there will be good um, prerequisites um, uh, provided uh, for improving the situation further on. As far as um, economics uh, are concerned, we've had uh, uh, discussions on that uh, matter with Mr. Poroshenko and with the representatives of uh, Denmark and a few other uh, nations related to the association agreement signed by Ukraine with the EU. So I have warned them that Russia would have to protect its own economy, its own economic interests and its own markets. So as soon as an association agreement with Ukraine has been signed by the EU, Russia will instantly have to take measures uh, to protect its uh, economic interests. Uh, I would like to remind you that uh, within the framework of the CIS free trade area, we have zero tariffs uh, with Ukraine, as with other countries uh, of um, that association. But according to Ukraine's association, Ukraine's um, uh, projective association agreement with the EU, um, all of uh, e European goods uh, would be coming to, to Ukraine um, barrier-free, and uh, from there on they would be coming to Russia toll-free, which is unacceptable to us, uh, and uh, we do not have that kind of arrangements with uh, Europe. So we will have to go back to the normal, most favored nation mode uh, in our relations uh, with Ukraine, in our trade with Ukraine. That is in internationally accepted practice, but uh, something tells me that uh, it would be difficult for Ukraine because in that case, uh, uh, its goods uh, would not be competitive even in Russia. If they were to have uh, 
uh, import tariffs levied uh, from them. And also, as you probably know, um, the citizens of Ukraine, they uh, have um, even more of a, a preferential status when uh, traveling to Russia, uh, even compared to, uh, the, to citizens of other CIS nations. Uh, they are entitled to be in Russia without registration for three months. And after that, they don't even have to go back to Ukraine to get a Russian visa. All they can do is just uh, mail their passport back home and get it back. Uh, but according to our information, some five to six million Ukrainians work in Russia. That is a lot of people, and we'll have to think about how we should regulate uh, this area of uh, exchange between uh, Russia and Ukraine. So there are quite a few issues that demand um, some very serious thinking. I hope that we will be able to restore some kind of contact and uh, communication with the European Commission. So far, what well, we previously had agreed ab uh, about consultations with the EU, but so far we've had none. Uh, and I've pointed to that to the British Prime Minister, Mr. Cameron. We have um, uh, shown some initiative uh, in this uh, regard, uh, but so far we have seen no, no progress. Otherwise, uh, we've discussed um, a lot of things uh, with my counterparts um, here comprehensively, and we'll see how the situation will develop. And how quickly do you think a ceasefire can be achieved? I think that must be done immediately. The punitive operation in eastern Ukraine must be halted and stopped instantly. That is the only prerequisite for launching a negotiation uh, between the, the government in Kiev and um, the proponents of uh, a federation in Ukraine. So far, those people have not been offered anything by anyone from Kiev. And those people have no idea right now what kind of, li what kind of life the future holds for them, what uh, Ukraine's future constitution might look like. This has not uh, been as much as discussed in advance. Uh, there were conversations uh, among the participants of Ukraine's presidential race in the run-up to the election within the framework of um, televised debates. But uh, none of the representatives of Eastern Ukraine's, uh, Ukraine had been invited to those debates. The presidential race in Ukraine is over, and so is the presidential election. Now we have to uh, get down to substantive work, as diplomats say. It's people to people work. Can I ask you one final question? Vladimir Vladimirovich. One question. How likely, what, is, what are the odds that a ceasefire can be achieved? In Ukraine, настолько как бы вероятно, что можно добиться прекращения огня после вот достаточно важной встречи, которая сегодня состоялась. Я думаю, что это добрая воля. Uh, this should be, this should depend upon the goodwill or statesman wisdom uh, that uh, the Ukrainian government should display. To that, to that end, the punitive operation in eastern Ukraine must be immediately stopped and a ceasefire must be immediately announced. That is the only prerequisite uh, for launching a negotiation. That is the only way. If right sector has uh, been participating in the hostilities, and that is uh, an insurgent group, if they have their own fighters, uh, if, and uh, if they can actually uh, commit Ukrainian military s servicemen to uh, a shooting squad for refusing to shoot upon their own compatriots, uh, uh, or if they uh, execute wounded uh, 
enemy troops, uh, wounded um, uh, captives. You know, what kind of negotiation can be launched in this kind of um, this situation? And I told my counterparts that uh, a lot of things need to be in investigated in Ukraine, including the massacre in Odessa. I would also like to ask you about uh, a domestic issue in Russia. I uh, asked you about it once uh, during uh, the, your hotline in Russia. Uh, you commented on that situation. Um, and this is about the RAIN TV network. Uh, and after you commented on the situation during your hotline, some of the advertisers came back to uh, that network, um, uh, but some um, and some have been convinced that there had been no no order from the Kremlin to uh, to crack down on uh, uh, RAIN network. You know, I have never given an order to uh, crack down on RAIN TV station. I never gave an order for cable operators to drop their relations with you. I don't give this kind of orders uh, and I didn't give uh, an order in this situation. It's the same question here and there. Recently, you, you said it is necessary to decapitalize Gazprom. What did you mean? Did you mean to uh, issue new shares um, in the interest of the government? Well, yes, it is um, one of the, the options uh, for um, for using that. It is a, a no a no lose uh, option for investing money. It is not the only option, just one of them. But of course, a long term contract for two for twenty years by Gazprom will attract money from the market easily. And besides, we have an arrangement with our Chinese partners for a prepayment, in essence. And that would make uh, this project much cheaper. But actually, there are many options, including decapitalization. No, we have not. We did not discuss uh, gas prices with President Poroshenko, but I know that Gazprom and their Ukrainian counterparts are now very close to some final agreement. I don't rule out uh, the possibility of um, doing a favor for our Ukrainian partners uh, and uh, making some concessions. Uh, uh, of course, uh, um, provided that uh, they um, settle their old arrears to Gazprom. And of course, uh, there is something that our Western p uh, uh, partners should also keep in mind. Uh, the risk of non-payments from Ukraine is still very significant. And if somebody can, uh, th thinks that you can resolve that issue by uh, reverse supplies of gas, uh, that will not resolve it. Because if we see that somebody uh, is um, uh, is not paying us uh, enough, we will just uh, uh, reduce the volumes of gas shipped. So you, uh, they won't be able to siphon it off. And also, the risk of non-payments is still high. And uh, if uh, Ukraine uh, welches on those payments to us, uh, the uh, the debt will fall on uh, Europe. We know that Russia possesses huge resources, and we're ready to work constructively with our partners. Uh, and actually, throughout the previous months, we could easily cut gas supplies to Ukraine and um, tra uh, uh, in transit to the mode of um, prepayments for gas. Uh, but we didn't do that because we were always hoping to come to terms with Ukraine. And I'll, uh, also, I would like to say that uh, the European Commission and Mr. Ettinger, who heads its energy wing, uh, have played a very constructive role. I would like to repeat that I hope uh, that very soon those negotiations will be successfully completed.